Y'all, we just took off the tire on a bus. Did the other side of the brakes already. There's the uh, pile of stuff. All right, so this ring went on the hub here, just like so. And uh, we got these little wheel caps. They just turn right off, the cover comes off, then you get the lug nuts. My gun didn't want to take one of the lug nuts off, but we got it off. So be prepared to have like a breaker bar or something because they can be on there real tight. I'm gonna put some anti-seize on these threads before I put it back together. Now in the back of here, what I got to fit was a 3 8 Allen. Might have been a nine millimeter, I don't know, they're all rusty. What I had to do first was uh, clean out the hardware. So I'm gonna take my little Dremel tool and clean that out. All right, this side was not rusty like the other side as far as the hardware goes. Maybe it's been replaced in the past or something. I'm gonna be able to get my socket out easy, so I'm just gonna shoot some PB Blaster in where the socket's going. The other side, yeah, the, the hardware must have been replaced or something. All right, I got this uh, 3 8 Allen socket, and I'm gonna tap it in there. Super tight. Like a nine and a ten, or uh, like a nine's too sloppy and a ten is too big, so I went with three eighths. There we go. All right, getting these bolts out of here. So yeah, we were using a 3 8 socket. That's what was working for me. Matt, what year is this? Like 2000 with a yeah. diesel? Yeah, 2000. So it should be like a 9 millimeter, but they were so rusty. I don't know. I don't know what size they're supposed to be. The 3 8s fit perfect in this bottom one. Too tight in the top one, I had to hammer it in. I had to hammer it in both sides over on the other side. So I don't know, but 3 8s got the job done. What we're gonna do is compress the caliper all the way with a thick screwdriver. We're gonna go all the way through and pull back. We can always bleed the brakes later if you're worried about uh, old brake fluid going up in there. So this caliper is pretty rusty. We're gonna get it to compress as far as we can using this method. There we go, it's going. Matt, I should have a long bar on that second drawer there. Cause this cal this uh this screwdriver's bending a little too much. I don't want to break break or bend my screwdriver. There should be a bar, a black bar. There you go. Try to get that caliper compressed all the way so I don't have to bust out my caliper tool. You don't want to gouge your rotor when you do that if you're reusing your rotor. And this should just slide right off now. The brake hose doesn't give you much room, which is kind of stupid. We're gonna pop these pads out. There's one, and two. Now we've got to take these guys out. These slides, clean them up. They should slide in that bushing. This one is jammed on the bushing, a little rust. But this set of brake pads came with some new bushings to shove in there. So we'll grab two of those. Little black bushings. Put a little grease in them on the outside so that they slide into the caliper. Fat side through the outside of the caliper. Fat side stops at the outside of the caliper. There we go. And make sure it's seated on the inside where it sit, where it's supposed to sit. And another one. This 
brake hose not as rusty as the other side, so I'm not as worried about hurting it. Looks like somebody might have put new hardware and uh, brake hose on this a long time ago compared to the other side. See, that one slid in all the way like it's supposed to. This one's got a little lip on it. It doesn't want to push through all the way. That's all right. We'll get her. We'll get her done. All right, now we got to clean off our pins on the wire wheel. See how rusty they are? So we need those cleaned up on the wire wheel. Where's the other one right here? Who wants to knock that out? Can I do that real quick? All right. Matt can fill. Yep. Fill me in and do that. Or film you. Uh, that or me. Oh, uh, just film me. I'm about to put these pads in. Okay. We can put these pads in without that. Those pins in. But I'm going to clean up where the caliper sits a little bit. Just knock some of this rust off. The other side was really rusty, had it built up. This side, not bad. A lot of mud and stuff on the bottom, knocking it off. That's just where that caliper slides. bunch of mud right there I wanted to knock off. I knocked that off with a little Dremel tool. Hopefully this caliper is pressed in far enough. I think it is. The other side was when I pressed it back like that. Now this pad slides in this groove. So you wanna make sure the caliper is clean where this like square sits. So if there's any built up rust here, you just wanna knock it off. You get a lot of rust build up there as the caliper pushes out, the pad won't want to push in. With the caliper, you'll end up wearing out the outside pad only if it locks into this groove. I'll just put a little grease on it just to keep the rust at bay for the future, for the longevity of the pads. This is some high temp silicone based brake grease. This brand, uh, AGS Silglide, it doesn't like melt off or wash off like some other brands I've tried. I've done some brake jobs and they came back after 70,000 miles and uh, the grease is still there. We're going to lock this pad in. It's got a little flip. I'm just going to press it in. Trying not to get any grease on my brake pad. And this is tight in there. It doesn't want to go down. See, that's too tight. We need to knock the rust off more. I, it looked pretty clean to me, but it's too tight. See, I can't move the pad at all after tapping it into place. Well, that's why it's important to keep that uh, rust out of the side of the caliper there. So now we'll pop that pad back out and clean it up a little more. The little clip was stopping me. We're gonna clean it up even more with our little Dremel tool. There's too much rust.
it good enough the first time, but no, there was layers, layers to it. Let's get those slides in first, Austin. Take those. Now they're nice and shiny again. And we'll coat them with grease. A little more. And you're gonna be using brake grease, high temp. Silicone based. Put a little bit inside those new bushings. And slide them through. There we go. Another one. Ooh, too much. Squirt it out of there. Coat them up real good. Popped in there. Now you want to kind of like flush them out so they're not in the way. Grease everywhere. Now let's try popping that inner pad in again. These shavings out of the way. Yeah, it's set right in there this time. It's flush with the piston now without having to tap down with the hammer. Now our other pad clips into the caliper. It can be a little tricky sometimes. Lift up on one side, get it in there, then get the other side in there. Try not to get grease on the friction surface of your brake pad. Push from the side. There we go. Now it's locked in. Both pads are locked in. Everything's cleaned up. We can slide it back over the rotor. And, yeah, even out for me, pad. Pad came out. All right, we're going to have to compress this caliper a little more. Or that pad's just slipping and sliding on me too much. I can't tell. This is a brake hose doesn't give you much room when you got the wheel all the way to the side. Yeah, it's just barely not enough. There's that pad. Pop that pad out. This caliper is pretty clean, but it's got a rust spot right here. I think it doesn't want to go back in any further because that rust spot probably been sitting for years. So we gotta press that caliper in. I'm gonna use a little tool. Grab my caliper tool. And we'll just put a flat piece on it. You don't have to use a fancy caliper tool. You use a cheap one. You could use a C-clamp, couldn't you? You could. C-clamp, big pliers. This caliper was fine until it hit that rust lip on the inside. Mm -hmm. We're going to grab an old pad. press up against the, the piston. And just press the piston all the way in. We're not replacing the rotor, so if you're replacing the rotor and the pads, you would, uh, you would need this piston all the way in. It's actually turning in pretty easy. I think I just maxed out on that screwdriver as far as I could press in. 
So yeah, there's no problem with this caliper turning in. I, I thought it might be a little rusty on the inside there, but no, it's turning in smooth, nice and easy. All right, just hit a stiff spot. I might be at the end of the line for the caliper. Now we can take this tool out and we should have enough room to slide the caliper over the pad, over the rotor with the pads installed. Oh, my hands are so slippery. Keep turning. There we go. Now that caliper is all the way pressed in. Put our pads in again. I actually did the other side faster because the caliper pressed in with the screwdriver just enough to get the pads over where this one needed a hair more. There we go, I just slid right over it, bada boom. See, that's where that caliper is gonna slide on that top and bottom, so make sure you don't have a huge rust lip, lip here. This one's actually really clean for what it is. Now we're ready to put our hardware bolts back in. There we go. So I'll tighten these hardware bolts back up. Then we'll put our, uh, our little plate on, zip down the lug nuts, put our cover on, put our lug nut covers on, straighten out the wheels, bleed the brakes, and uh, pump that brake pedal before you take off so that the caliper seats up the pads against the rotor. You gotta pump it until your brake pedal gets tight again. All right, so don't be taking off with a loose brake pedal. That'll about do it, guys.